The European Union has pushed for gradual reopening of uh, internal borders which are shut due to the coronavirus pandemic. The Commission has expressed that it was not too late to salvage the summer season for tourism and has also recommended phased approach to reopening the borders. In Europe, the tourism sector accounts for nearly 10% of the whole bloc's economy, but with inevitable lockdown, the sector has suffered unimaginable losses. Now the European Union has urged member nations to adopt unrestricted free movement once again and has envisaged a framework to revive travel and tourism businesses across the continent. People need, of course, to be able to travel uh, between European countries. So we are giving guidance on how to gradually reopen transport links without risking the health of travelers or transport workers. Third, travelers and workers, they need to know that the places that tourists visit, that they are safe. Hotels, restaurants, beaches, other uh, tourist sites, they need to be run in a way that minimizes the risk of passing on the coronavirus. Countries like Italy, Spain and France, which are battered by the coronavirus pandemic, are also some of the major tourist destinations in Europe. The governments of these three countries are already strategizing an exit plan for lockdown and likely to restart operations soon. Austria and Germany plan to fully reopen their border and Switzerland, with an exception of Italy, will start free travel on the 15th of June. Authorities in Spain are planning to keep the country's borders closed until July. In Germany, Chancellor Angela Merkel said that the aim was to eliminate border controls from the 15th of June across the Schengen area. However, experts have warned about a possible second wave of infections. Of course, we are the guardians of uh, the treaty and uh, we are looking at um, uh, how member states are implementing legislation. And if uh, this um, situation of infringing uh, the European law will uh, uh, emerge in various member states, of course, we are determined to take steps. But this will be, I would say, uh, a different letter, a letter of infringement, a different letter than the one I'm going to send to Commissioner Reinders uh, tomorrow. Most European Union member nations have imposed emergency border control rules and have adopted strict social distancing measures. Millions of people are currently jobless and the tourism sector is at the brink of collapse. As of now, the deadly virus has infected more than 1.6 million and has killed over 157,000 people in Europe. Joining us on this broadcast is Vion's Lucy Hu, who's joining us live from Brussels. Lucy, uh, welcome to Vion this uh, afternoon. Can you tell us what are the exact measures that European Union is taking to revive or at least salvage this summer's tourism season? Well, what the European Commission has announced is not uh, really legally enforceable measures, but rather a set of guidelines uh, to advise countries on how they can come out of the uh, strict lockdown measures, but also resume some uh, to freedom of movement, uh, particularly within the 26 member states Schengen zone. This is as 17 of the 26 countries in that Schengen zone at the moment have some degree of border control uh, in place at the moment to contain the spread of COVID-19. So. What the European Commission is looking at is a two-phased approach to this, whereby you would start with a limited amount of local, then regional travel, but particularly uh, in areas where the, the risk of COVID-19 is comparatively low, such as in the eastern Baltic states, for example, which includes uh, Latvia and Estonia, which have largely been spared a serious outbreak of COVID-19. Uh, they have agreed this week to allow freedom of movement uh, within those, a group of three countries, a cluster, so what we will see over the coming weeks and months is the formation of, of travel bubbles from which uh, some citizens can travel to, to neighboring countries with similar levels of COVID-19 risk. That's something that will be assessed by the EU's health agency, uh, the ECDC. Moving forward, we would then go into phase two, uh, which would see freedom of movement resumed completely within the Schengen zone. But experts are warning that is a process that is likely to take months, not weeks. Does this um, uh, plan involve uh, the UK as well? 
It does for the time being, and it, we, you know, the UK is abiding by EU rules until the end of the transition period, which is the end of uh, December 2020. So we have, uh, you know, uh, another six or seven months to go, uh, by, from which the, the UK follows most EU legislation. And what we are seeing again is these deals struck between individual member states, something the European Commission is uh, being cautious about. Obviously, it's, it acts in the spirit of solidarity and cooperation. But what we are seeing is the UK signing a deal with France to uh, prevent uh, any travellers travelling uh, between those two countries from having to mandatory self-quarantine for 14 days upon arrival. But, you know, what the travel experts are saying uh, in Europe is that, you know, this will mean that European travels, travellers will travel to France in order to get to the UK uh, and vice versa. So really this won't do very much to contain the spread uh, of the virus. So, yes, for now the UK is uh, abiding by these rules, but clearly at the moment the UK is one of uh, the worst affected countries in mm. Europe and seems to be a couple of weeks behind other countries such as uh, France and Spain, which are starting now to move into the next phase of their lockdowns. The numbers in the UK still remain comparatively high. So, for example, it may be difficult for British citizens to travel to a country like Greece where there is a low level of infection. Lucy Hu, thank you so much for joining us uh, live from Brussels, getting us all those updates as Europe plans to salvage the summer travel season.